from the beginning of fiction where stories were told around a campfire right up to today where stories are told around AI voice TikTok videos, mankind has always been obsessed with one thing. Can my made up character beat your made up character? Shueisha, as a publisher of lots of very famous made up characters in Weekly Shonen Jump magazine, realized that if pretending to be Luffy to pretend fight your friend pretending to be Naruto was good enough for kids in the playground, then it should be more than good enough for big kids like you and me to actually pay money for. And that's why today we're playing the critically acclaimed Jump Ultimate Stars. Ah, uh, what? That doesn't have any notable anniversary for a couple of years? Ah, oh, what are we playing instead? Oh my, Kami. What in the Unreal Engine 4 is this? You see, Jump Force was released five years ago this week, in the long forgotten year of 2019. A crossover fighting game released for all the major platforms in celebration of the magazine's 50th anniversary. And going into it, aside from watching a trailer or two, five years ago, that's actually all I knew about it. On my channel here, I take a look into the games of yesteryear, as they hit a milestone year since their release. And here in this series, I'm looking to see what makes a game timeless. Though, this may seem like I'm only going to look at retro games in the search of a timeless classic, and I am totally doing that, really I'm going to review a quite broad church of games from various time periods. I think a game can possibly be an instant classic or a dated flop even on release, but even a little bit of time can make these strengths or flaws more obvious. The game this week was received to pretty mixed reviews, but I hear I like to make my own mind up, thank you very much mum. So, five years after its release, here's my first time experience with Jump Force, and whether we think it's still good today. Jump Force hits you with the fan service straight up, because let's face it, if you're going to make a fighting game with Goku in it, he's going to be the star. If you're going to pick a villain, Freeze is a good start. <laughs> okay, there we go. Classic Dragon Ball Z teleporting. He's so fuzzy. <laughs> but moments later, the actual star of the show appears. I'm guessing someone got hit. Oh. Classic shove a MacGuffin in me. I've been MacGuffined. Oh, yes. Now I can be really anime. Ooh, how anime do I want to be? He's hideous. I think voice too. <laughs> As you can tell, that was a, you had a voice playback button there. And you can, you can push it once. Yeah, but you can also do this. <laughs> I'm not going to get over how he looks. Now, 25 minutes in, thanks to the character customization, we finally fight and discover our latent destructive power. Oh, the light is great. The battle tutorial now begin. You can skip it by defeating the opponent. That's not really skipping that, is it? Okay. I have to beat him, right? Okay, got some combos. The, the camera is not keeping up. Nah, I want to attack the bin. Can't attack the plant. Oh my gosh! He just runs through plants! Oh my gosh, the raw destructive ability! Like, watch this telegraph pole. Can I... Tap, tap, just tap. <laughs> He's so destructive. Even just oh, oh no. Oh my gosh, I've learned I've learned the shadow step. Flash step. It's like I'm not even moving. And yet he can't even see. He can't even see me step. And now I'm behind him. <laughs> After a decent showing of Jump Force's central mechanic, the fighting game, we now get to spend a chunk of time not actually doing the fighting game. And when you're out of the fighting game part of the fighting game, the fighting game shows lots of cracks. The animation lurping is too slow. That's, that's a weird thing I don't think I've ever said before in a game, but 
it just turns into a pose slowly. It's not quick. Yeah. Everything's like a bit slow. Like he took his time to start the walk. He took his time to to emote. Oh no. There's no eye animations. Everyone's really still. <laughs> it's really throwing me off how unanimated they are. And no one's eyes are animated. That's the kill. That's, this is animation 101. Imagine. Oh God. Imagine you have all of the uh, all of the creative talent of Weekly Shonen Jump. Which has made an untold number of hits. And then you make a game that can't tell a story. I think Mangaka worked much of the story job for us. I don't think a single Mangaka was consulted, is going to be my expectation. I would guess Shonen Shueisha were consulted. Can I ask you any questions? Okay. I can't. I, no. Not even colliders on walking characters. Come on. <laughs> His walk animation is really good too. <laughs> no, really? Oh, gosh. I'm like, walk two steps to find an invisible wall. On the bright side, I did find this part. Zero in emotions. <laughs> this is why you just push buttons because you never know when you'll find a, a vibrating vote bike to put on. Oh, he's so jittery. <laughs> oh, what else can I do? A boat. I mean, that's sort of. <laughs> All right, a frog. Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it doesn't even animate! <laughs> okay, what else we got? A small pod. Okay, this one's fine. I mean, I know there's clipping in there, but this at least makes it. Whoa! I forget to use the frog. What else we got? Oh, there's the emotes. There we go. Okay, we got some emotes. Anything good? Dance one. Very important. God, I hope there's a dance too. Jesus. Hey, okay. <laughs> Probably not push this. But we are getting on the frog. Whee! <laughs> Onwards. Bye, Leonard. Or Leonard. This is the best. I don't know why people gave this a bad rating. Fortunately, we eventually get back into fighting. Evil Marine, evil... Saiyan, oh. How'd that get into him? It snuck up behind him, did it? It didn't go up his butt, did it? It's gonna be one of those, I mean, Super Smash Brothers already did this, but I have to free all these characters. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I felt pretty, it felt pretty epic to do that. I think Namek doesn't look too bad either. Oh, oh, the Kayaken's good. Oh, it's good. Oh, <laughs> all right. The Dragon Ball Z characters feel pretty good in this game, I think. I think, at least. And with this, the game opens up. Maybe it opens up too much. All right. Key missions, free missions. Let's pick up a free mission just to see. Lands an 8-hit combo. I mean, that's pretty easy. All right, there's a few characters there that I haven't seen yet. I can just pick whoever I want here. Even if I haven't locked them. Okay. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to say. 
It doesn't make sense. Free missions aside, we can now start unlocking characters for the story missions. This is great fun to experience fighting against them for the first time. Oh, what is that? <laughs> Whoa! God, that was cool. <laughs> ah, 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 no, no, Chunkin. Oh, no. He's got the properties of gum and rubber. I blocked it. Oh no! Oh, he's dead! So in Jump Force, what I seem to find is that when they put a fight in a cutscene, it's incredible. Like this. I love how threatening he looks. It's great. It's great. Sanshi. Okay, this is good. This might be the first moment I'm like, okay. If you're going to do a crossover fighting game. You got to make it feel like this. These are the moments that people play this game for. But when they just want two characters to talk, it's laughable like this. <laughs> The laugh's good. Zero. <laughs> oh, Blackbeard's one of my favorites. Come on. He's big. They made him big. It's good. Oh, he's so big. Alright, I'm pretty happy to see Blackbeard. <laughs> the face animation! Is <laughs> so wrong. Animated characters, give them animation. It's killing me. It's also a very uh, old style presentation of cutscenes. And I say old in the sense of like, if I saw a cutscene set up like this in 2000, I'd be like, yeah, we, we played Silent Hill the other week, right? And dialogue happens, pause, happens, pause, happens, pause. Because you play it and then you play it and you play it. This is the same deal. It's, you know, unchanged from 1999. But let's look at the fighting a bit. You see, on one hand, there's some great moments here. I do some good moves. I have to consider some fighting game strategy and damn, I look so damn anime whilst doing it. That's unfortunate. Come on. All right, I'm starting to find range attacks. Very good. <laughs> All right, we've got the, the technique. It's even kicking my ass at times for obviously not getting with the program properly. Barely blocking that. Aha! Ah! On the other hand though, fights are very, I don't know, samey? You see, Jump Force has a round-based system where it allows a bunch of things to flow across rounds, but they never use it in the story. It's just lots of single round set pieces bookended by cutscenes. It never gets a go awakened. It just, there's, there's no, like, I want to go Super Saiyan. I, do I have to absolutely cop it? No, I have to do multi-round fights to go Super Saiyan. Okay, that sounds fine. Can I do some multi-round fights? No. No, that's, that's, that's for the real game. We're not playing the real game, we're playing the story mode. Usually, a really great way to play the real game. Not here. Here it's the way to play 30 seconds or something of gameplay. Watch a loading screen, play another 30 seconds. Also, it doesn't take long to realize, I don't know how this game works. However, I don't know if this is my fault. No, I'm blocking. I'm blocking. This is going to do kill me anyway. Ah, I can't see. There's rocks everywhere. What am I meant to do there? <laughs> Just hold block forever? It's not very fun. 
Let's take this moment to have a little rant about the fighting mechanics. Now, I'm not a fighting game aficionado, and I know enough to know that Japan is the mecca of this genre. And you can see it in the variety of strategy that they put in the game. They've got all the mechanics for specials, blocks, escapes, counters, grabs, counter grabs, etc. But none of this means anything, because fights are just done so quickly there's nothing to learn or adapt to. I mean, come on, you pick a team of three, but since you share a health bar, and most matches are at best three rounds, and often just one round, Typically, the team is basically just window dressing. Sure, fighting games are action games, but at the highest level, which is the level you want to cater to if you have any hope of a long-lasting game, any competitive experience should involve strategy. I just can't see how there's any strategy to be had here in just such short ability spam focus matches. And uh, you know what? Let me segue this into another rant. The meta game. <laughs> the meta game is really bad. I have no positives to say about it, unfortunately. There's so many mechanics outside of the core fighting game loop, but they're just useless. Jump Force has level ups, limit break missions, consumables, free missions, upgrades, skills, skill upgrades, emotes, vehicles, a hub, etc, etc, etc. But why? Maybe I need to level up. If only I knew what leveling up did. It feels just like a checklist of game features an executive somewhere was ecstatic to read about, but it's just all absolutely, completely and utterly pointless. These things don't actually need to be pointless. They could have certainly had a point in Jump Force, but they don't. It's lazy. Uh, I have to, I have to say it. It's lazy. The longer I look at it, the lazier it is. <laughs> Here's all of the medium, medium missions. Challenges. It's the same challenge, just different characters. My experience with the game was just better if I ignored the existence of most of these metagame mechanics. More is good, right? More, more numbers. More numbers go up. Why are these numbers going up? Because it sounds good that they go up. But now I also have to say, please don't let the negativity fool you. As a spectacle, damn it's good. You can't help but enjoy the fantastic moments like these. That's unfortunate for you. That's unfortunate for you. What even happened? Whoa! Whoa! Wait a second! Wait a second, the game just got really good. The fan service in combat is sublime. Yes! The abilities are so amazingly anime, and beautiful nods to their manga and anime counterparts. The voice actors go pretty hard in these moments, and if you're a subs over dubs guy like me, it makes you grin like a child again to hear the voice actors giving it their all. But also on the fan surface... Mademoiselle. Does she not have... Lip... Face... Facial animation? <laughs> that animation is so janky. <laughs> Sanji, known for having strong legs. <laughs> the story is pretty bad. <laughs> Angela and Galena just, uh, just rearranged words, just rearranged names. The characters they use in moments are so perplexing. I mean, someone clearly loves putting Gara in as many scenes as they could for some reason. And, and like a met young eats me, what feels up, what feels like an outsafe car I mean, by him. The story just doesn't appeal to the fan service. Like, I want to see Goku and Luffy talk about eating meat. Or Kurapika and Sasuke competing over who has the stronger revenge story. But instead, the interactions are just, like, random. And some of the characters just seem out of place in the whole thing. Especially if they're, like, the only character in the whole franchise that exists in the game. Also, to cement the lack of care and polish in this game as a whole, this happened to me. Oh, I've crashed! Uh, an unreal, I, you can't see it, hold on, I'll see if I can get it, I can show it. There it is. Unreal Engine 4 Crash Reporter. At this point, I feel like I'm hating on it a bit. Maybe the story is largely to blame because it's just so shown and cliche. <laughs> He's such a bad guy. Oh, give me, give me a more generic lines. Soon I'll show you the truth, great line. Those who stand above before soul side to right, great line. I'll use the Oni book to remake the world. Great line. These are all fantastic villain lines. 
<laughs> but I also feel like I need to be clear. There's so many problems here, but sometimes the game just looks and feels fantastic. So here's just actually a few minutes of me absolutely loving the game and the work of the FX artists especially. Oh, Kaio, get him! Always good. Always good. Ah, <laughs> um, dead. Asadi's the ability. So if he's awakened... Oh, that looks good. Oh, the effects are good. They got it. They know how to do it. Oh! What was that? Oh, so anime! Oh! <laughs> With so intense, I forgot to talk for a bit. I love the pipe. He's alive! No! I'm dead. I used an attack at the same time. <laughs> Leaving my limits behind. It's such a good ability. That, that's a great finish shot. Some of the mine is good. That's good. Though. I appreciate that one. Okay, so where does this leave us for the review of Jump Force five years later? When I think about how it's aged, really the result of this review might seem obvious, but let's break it down. Visually, despite the large number of flaws in the story itself, the gameplay is super flashy and great to look at. The special moves are basically the piece de resistance of the entire Jump Force dish. Many characters look good in the Unreal Engine, and environments are of good quality. And that's where all my compliments end, unfortunately. The gameplay is fine, but nothing more. Completely ordinary in every way by fighting game standards. Outside of the roster, you'll find nothing here that isn't already in a hundred other games. The story is just completely uninteresting and barely even scratches an itch fans might have had in such a large crossover. The metagame is lazy. Just a bunch of systems thrown together to meet KPIs. And ultimately, the real kicker is that the PvP experience, the crux of any fighting game, has been cancelled. Heck, the whole game has been cancelled. You can't even really buy it anymore. And if that's not an indictment on the lack of belief on this project, I don't know what is. Forget this game having aged badly only a few years after it was released. I would wager this game was dated on arrival, and I have no worries ranking this as obsolete on my timelessness scale. If it interests you, I recommend just watching a montage of admittedly awesome special effects on YouTube, which is probably all the producers of this game ever did. And next time, just make Jump Ultimate Stars 2.